Anyone lucky enough to own a Sony multi-format PVM can take advantage of all resolutions analog video game consoles can output, from 240p all the way up to 1080i. Interfacing these consoles often requires a long chain of devices, but one new input board aims to solve that problem forever. All Sony L5 owners should take notice, the 129X Dual has arrived. Last year, developer Martin Heinfeld successfully reverse-engineered the BKM129X RGB and component video input card that's used in a few different Sony monitors. At the time, I was thrilled about the project because it represented the first step in giving the retro gaming community more access to these monitors. So if you found a D9H or a D14H without an input card, now there was a fairly priced, open-source solution to get RGB and component video into it. I thought the use with the L5 PVMs was pretty cool, and liked that people could now have a second input, but it wasn't adding any new functionality that didn't already exist in the L5s. It was basically just another input. Also, those H-series BVMs are a giant pain to use. They all have major sync issues, and even getting RGB working in the first place can be a nightmare. I've consistently had to toggle both sync and the aspect ratio button to get it to work, which makes no sense. So overall, it was a cool project and an excellent first step, but not something most people could take advantage of. But Martin wasn't done. He kept working on the project and came up with a 129X Dual, an input card compatible with all the same monitors, but with a SCART and a VGA input. You could toggle these inputs with the push button switch located between them, and the SCART input also breaks out the audio to a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you could route it back to the monitor or to external speakers. But wait, there's more. The VGA input also has a switchable sync combiner. That means you could directly connect RGBS with a VGA cable from devices like the Mister or Ashenworks' Jamma Mini, but if you toggle the sync combiner button, you could connect RGB HV, so regular VGA. That's right, this card essentially turns an L5 series PVM into a really, really nice VGA monitor. Let's check out how I have mine configured, as I think many people will want a similar setup. Installing the 129X Dual is as easy as removing both metal plates in the expansion slot. If you have another card there, you'll need to remove it and put it aside. If there is something there, it's probably an old SDI card that isn't really used for retro gaming. Also, while there's two slots in the back, it's only one input. They were made this way to accommodate a dual width card, not to add two inputs. Once the bays are cleared, insert the 129X Dual. It's much easier to install with both metal plates removed, as you could look in and watch where the input connector lines up. Once it's in and snug, you can slide the bezel over it. This one's a prototype, but I believe the production ones will be printed in a color that better matches the L5's color scheme. Then, just screw in the bezel to hold everything snugly in place, and replace the cover plate alongside it. If your L5 had another card installed, it should safely fit in the other slot, but this would just be storage. Once again, there's only one actual input, even though there's two slots. Now let's connect a SCART cable to test the input, but don't turn on the console just yet. First, power on the monitor and set it to the input labeled Option A. This will be the same input for both SCART and VGA. Then hit the menu button on the front right on the PVM, Scroll down three pages to user config one of two, and hit enter twice. Then use the up and down buttons to make sure the setting is set to RGB, and hit enter twice to confirm. Lastly, hit menu to exit. Then power on the console and see what happens. If you get no signal at all, toggle the button and back. If it works, but your screen is all crazy, just hit the external sync button, then everything should be fine. Now you've configured option A to this card. Also, if you're running audio to the monitor's speakers, you could connect a Y adapter right to the RCA jack labeled Option Audio Input 1. This will let you send both stereo audio channels from your console to the PVM's single mono speaker. Don't worry, Steve from HD Retrovision and I did a video a while back proving this is 100% safe to do. 
It's funny, even with this video out there, I still read posts from people insisting that combining audio will kill your PVM. Look, maybe somebody did have a PVM that died right around the time that they added a Y cable to the audio input, but I guarantee it wasn't because of that. It was probably just an old monitor and it happened to happen around the same time. Because like we've proven many times, adding a Y cable to video is not good at all and no one should ever do that. But adding a Y cable to audio is totally fine. So if you want more information, please check that video out. I don't mean to push the issue, but there's so much misinformation going on out there. And whenever there's solid proof like this, I like to make sure that everybody understands why and how these things work the way they do. Okay, rant over, back to the PVM stuff. For VGA use, connect your cable. I'm using a Dreamcast VGA cable in this example and toggle the middle button to switch from SCART to VGA mode. If you have sync issues, it might be in pass-through mode. So just toggle the top button to enable sync combiner mode. This uses an XNOR sync combiner circuit designed by Steve from HD Retrovision to safely combine H and V sync into a composite sync signal that's safely compatible with the L5s. As a note, while this 129X dual card will work with the H series BVMs, sync works exactly like the original Sony card. And by that, I mean it usually doesn't work at all. We're working on a device to cure this once and for all, but that won't be out for a while. I just wanted to make the point that if you run into sync issues with the H-series monitors, it's the monitor's fault, not the 129X Dual. Also, regardless of which monitor you're using this with, I think it's safe to leave both SCART and VGA cables connected, but you'd be sharing grounds, so that might cause some interference, and there could be issues if you powered both consoles on at the same time. I prefer to just connect one at a time, and that audio Y adapter comes in handy for this. Whenever I use a VGA source, I just pop off the cable from the SCART adapter and connect the VGA console's audio to the Y cable. Then when I'm done, I put it back the way it was and tuck the cable slack under the monitor for a tidy look. This card can also accept RGBS, not just VGA. If you'd like to use something like an RGBS signal from the Mister, you'll just need to toggle the sync combiner circuit button once more. I imagine RGBS won't be used too often in this configuration, but I'm really glad Martin added the option just in case people need it. One last thing to mention is component video. Since you already have those BNC connectors in the back of the monitor, why not pick up a set of cheap RCA to BNC adapters? This way you could utilize the built-in BNC inputs for component video, and heck, you could even add BNC adapters to composite on input number two. This means the monitor could accept every input you could imagine from all your consoles. Just a note about those cheap BNC adapters, I suggest getting a cheap bag of 10 from Amazon and not buying the good ones like I suggest when using an oscilloscope. You don't want an adapter skewing your scope readings, but I doubt there would be any difference on a PVM. Worst case, if one gives you trouble, toss it and use another. And while I really hate wasting stuff like that, I hate wasting money even more. Getting 10 cheap ones is less than half the price of five good ones, plus you'll end up with spares. Overall, that definitely makes the most sense when just connecting consoles to a PVM. To enable component video on the BNC input, it's pretty much the same process as before. Press the RGB comp button to toggle the input, enter the menu, scroll down to the RGB component section, and select component video. Like before, if you get any sync issues, just toggle the EXT sync button. As a note, you can still pass component video through the 129X Dual. I wouldn't recommend it on the L5s since they already have built-in BNC inputs, unless one of your BNC inputs broke or something. It's really handy on the H-Series monitors though, as you could just use a cheap RCA to VGA adapter or SCART pass-through. Depending on your needs, just getting a BNC version of Martin's 129X card might be easier, but this is certainly a great option for H-Series owners. Honestly, if you own an L5 monitor, this is pretty much a must buy. And I rarely say stuff like that. But just the thought of having every input available for every different type of analog video signal without unplugging or replugging anything is a huge deal to me and certainly makes my life a lot easier. Now, of course, if you already have a perfectly wired setup and there's no need for any other inputs, then this probably isn't for you, but I'd still consider it anyway, just because this allows you an easy way to plug something in without messing with your existing setup. Overall, if you're an L5 owner, you should at least think about picking one of these up. 
I'd also recommend it for the H-Series BVMs as well, for people that don't already own input cards for them. They work equal to or better than the originals on both, but it's just so much more exciting to use this on my 20L5, which is why I use that as the focus of this video. They're available to purchase now, and since it's an open source project, you could also make your own. Martin even has designs for single SCART or VGA options as well, in case you aren't going to use one of the functions. I really think the dual is the way to go though. It's just so awesome having all that functionality built in. Before I go, I just want to thank Martin one more time for putting all the work into this project, and also, of course, for open sourcing it for all retro game and monitor enthusiasts to enjoy. Martin hasn't slowed down though, and you'll be seeing a lot more of him in the future. He's got a few more tricks up his sleeve, including one that'll be a game changer for all the A's out there. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video, please consider supporting the channel as these videos, the weekly podcast, the website, and all the behind the scenes work is funded solely by the retro gaming community. So your support really does make a difference. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.